There we go. Oh, wow. Actually, sorry that I'm talking. Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm um, Seer. I'm here to talk about Raw. I have some very quick news and notes. That's what's going to happen this week, because this is going to be a long, interesting week, I, I think. I fear. I fret. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. A um, couple things as far as the way this week goes. Again, Tuesday morning-ish, I'll put up this video. That's uh, Monday night. I just wanted to chill out. I had a, kind of a busy Sunday. Um, Tuesdays, my normal think it will be my normal impact uh, live stream review I think they're going to have some matches if it's a really I don't know we'll, we'll, I'll see what happens but I'll be here Tuesday live streaming again oh yes I have to mention probably you won't be seeing stuff like this anymore because that's the door of wrestling um, one day oh actually probably in a few more months I'll show the video of the wall the door of wrestling again I don't think at least for a while there's a whole bunch of wrestler signatures some tickets to some events some kind of advertisements for other events uh, my southern pro lucha libre business card or Jorge's southern pro lucha libre business card so I have no idea when that's ever gonna be back um, I do plan to have a couple live reviews. Eventually, I'm going to get back up to Jacksonville, get to a wrestling show there. Um, definitely, I'm going to check out one day the local scene here in Daytona Beach whenever I leave my job, which means I get my boat. So that's some stuff for me to do. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a very typical AEW review night. Thursday, I think. <laughs> Del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos will be here. Um, he's going to give predictions. Him or Doctor Tom? I haven't figured out who I'm going to invite. They both they both do terrible things to this house. Io del Hobo, El Vagabundo, steals my tequila. Dr. Tom steals my scotch. Terrible, terrible house guests. Um, so one of those two will give their predictions for the weekend. Uh, Friday, then, is going to be Smack, a SmackDown review. That's kind of the final go-home show. Again, just to reiterate, Door of Wrestling. Saturday is going to be weird. I might be going to a con. I might actually just say, screw it. I'm tired of being held hostage by COVID-19. I might actually go to a concert. Um, I'll be doing that after work, so I won't get too bound for glory. I think I've missed this one in the past. That's okay. Um, I'll definitely keep you guys in mind. And what I might do... I might take some concert footage and make that kind of a bonus episode for Halloween week. Because Halloween, I do a lot. Wow, I do do a lot in Halloween week. But that's okay. I do it for you, my YouTube audience, because you guys won't have the door of wrestling like I will. Sunday's going to be the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I will be doing a review on that. It might be a little bit late. I do have to work. Um, then for the rest of the month, Monday, normal show. Everyone Halloween Havoc is. I forget if it's honestly on a Halloween or if it's just like on Wednesday night. So we'll see. Tuesday, very typical Tuesday Impact Wrestling show. Wednesday, AEW. Thursday, if I do get to that concert, I have no idea what it's going to be like. I'm going to show some video footage for you, my YouTube audience. You might also see a special guest. Might see Twisted Pixie there. Who knows? I just hope that, that, that evil 
scuzzball. Iho del hobo el vagabundo dos doesn't take my place and like drops me off someplace not nice in Jacksonville, like the whole west side or or parts of the north side. Not good places for 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 hobos like me. Um, then Friday, the thirtieth, the eve of All Hallows Eve. Will be a typical SmackDown. It's probably going to be some ridiculously goofy show. We'll see. Um, I might have Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo Cuatro Cinco do that. And then depending when they have Halloween Havoc on Halloween itself, I might have two shows. Again, remember, the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League will be coming on next week. And Halloween Havoc, I guess, for NXT. That's okay. Um, I was having a little discussion with my friend. So, yeah, it's, it's, he asked how I felt about spin the wheel, make the deal. I like it. They have to keep it only to, like, Halloween Havoc shows, though. If they move it to the main roster just for, like, a random gimmicked pay-per-view, Spin the wheel, make the deal. It's one of those things where it feels special if it's once in a while. Or once like once a year, that kind of feels special. Oh, and also, let's see here. Is it next? Uh, on Halloween? I don't know how I spell Halloween. All how ho- well. Let's see. Moving cursors around. But oh, WooTube! WooTube had a very special guest. Let me show you that. Sean Ross Sapp. I have no idea why such a prestigious person such as Sean Ross Sapp, would ever be on WooTube. But I guess something happened to his cable. It's probably terrible. This is his Twitter. Um, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com at Sean Ross Sapp, like one hour ago. It's one of those nights when I have to watch Raw on Tamiya. And... They're playing the, the twerk re- reviewer. Could be worse. Could be playing my show again. It is a f- official, folks. Sean Ross Sapp watches WooTube. That means WooTube's mainstream, I guess. I'm doing something the pros are doing. Does that make me a professional? No, they get paid for it. Not yet, but one day. I hope. Maybe. Um, enough about that. So that's the whole schedule. Yep, it is what it is. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Oh, yes, thank you, Sonny Kispembo, for mentioning the door of wrestling. It's always back there. Um, again, not many people are going to have a door of wrestling anymore because they're just... I don't think that... I think they might start traveling through Florida... The WWE might start traveling through Florida like in a couple more weeks in November. AEW's back to doing their live shows for the most part up in Jacksonville. That's why I might go to it. Maybe December. I don't know. I just have to think of something good. Um, maybe for New Year's Eve again because that was kind of cool and special. Just, oh, I need a new calendar. That's a whole other issue. But yeah, they're not going to, they're going to do it probably like they did with the NXT show. Well, they'll have probably a chain link fence and plexiglass, which makes sense because they, for the most part, travel in the hockey arenas. So all, they're going to have to get rid of the floor seats and they could just leave the glass up and that would kind of make sense. Then you have, like, 
just filling NXT people in the front row like AEW does. It's very good work. But it's getting late. I've had too many naps. I had a weird dream, too. I had some dream, like after my after work nap. I dreamt I was playing golf with Jim Cornette, and my golf ball turned out to be like some like lizard dog chew toy. Weird. It's plain out weird. Again, you don't want to listen to wrestling and then just go right to sleep. Bad idea. I've been having other weird dreams about wrestlers and work and combinations of those such. It's, ugh. <laughs> Sometimes it does beg to wonder what goes up on up in here. But I know what's, go what's going to happen now. We're going to talk about some Monday Night Raw for probably a little bit. Um, Retribution starts off the show. Well, Hurt Business comes out. Retribution comes out. They have a match. Uh, Retribution takes on the the Hurt Business. Oh, this this I'll tell you what. I was shocked. This was a good this was a good Raw. It really didn't feel like a go home show though. It just had a good Raw feel to it. Kind of odd. Uh, it starts off as a brawl. Just a fist and clubbing blows from both people. I think it was um, oh Bane, Bane, taking on Bobby Lashley. Um, Slapjack then gets in the ring. He eats a huge tongue suplex. He's Casey Jones is just there to get beat up. Uh, Ali shows up with no mask. Again, he reveals himself later in the show to be the SmackDown hacker. Wow, that's so underwhelming at this point. Uh, so Ali again, no, no math. He works over the arms of Cedric. Cedric tagged in. Uh, Shelton Benjamin gets in there. Again, he just grabs uh, another man by the dreadlocks. That's just probably wrong and funny at the same time. Uh, Lashley eventually gets to nail everyone as Lashley does. MVP just kind of chills out in the background. Uh, T-Bar... Get stuck in the um, oh, the hurt Nelson or the full bot. I forget what he calls it. It's a full. It's a full Nelson though. He eventually has to tap. Yep. Boom! That's man. This man. Bobby Lashley made me say that. I did something you could never do, Batman. I'm embarrassed for you, Brucey. Bruce Wayne, you're a wuss. You're nothing but a wuss, Batman. But yes, Bane tapped out. Uh, the Predator just got his dreadlocks pulled, and Casey Jones got suplexed. And Ali doesn't have doesn't wear a mask, so he's just Ali. But uh, the Hurt Business wins. That was really good. Um, they actually actually I forgot, forgot to mention this, but also at the beginning of the show. Um, they did interrupt the fiend. Bad thing to do. Uh, so after the match, the fiend comes out. He just beats up everyone. In Bane, Bane, I am the one who should be in control of Orlando, not this creature they call the fiend, the Batman. So now you have to deal with two of us. Yes, I will torture the good citizens of Orlando. And those, those, those bums and hobos and bum tona beats. Or the Fiend is here. Yes, Batman, yes. So the Fiend shows up. Uh, he does like the mandible claw. This looks actually really good. On, on. Bang! I have to get a better mask so I cannot get mandible clawed. But yeah, uh, T-Bone ate a kind of mandible claw sister Abigail combo. It was great. Uh, the Fiend put the mandible claw in him, kind of had him down the Sister Abigail position. Sister Abigailed him with a with a mandible claw. In. I like that. That's a good combination. Bravo, Bray Wyatt's done done such a good job. Whatever happened to poor Bo Dallas? Jeez. But I'll tell you what. This match was good. It was fun, entertaining, solid cheeseburger match. Then we had AJ Styles taking on Matt Riddle. 
And wow, AJ Styles managed to get a bodyguard. And it was a big guy that, that watched the door for Raw Underground. He got a promotion. He just has to stand there. And, and this is going to tell my age. But if you're old like me, you remember a TV show called Spencer for Hire. This guy looked like Hawk. Hawk was a big black guy. He wore a trench coat. He wore sunglasses. He had a gun with a barrel that was about this long. And he would just stand, stand there and say, You dig or you don't dig. The choice is yours. It was Avery Brooks, also Captain Cisco from Star Trek, before he lost a lot of weight. Funny story. I actually met him. Uh, one of my first jobs, paying paying my way right after college. Was I, I worked, when I first came home from college, I worked at Wegmans, uh, uh, slicing meat before I became a intern at a watershed association. But there I actually cut ham for Avery Brooks. And my coworker said, hey, you know who that is? And... I knew the voice because he said, I'd like, I'd like a quarter pound of ham sliced thin. And I'm like, I know that voice, but the guy was so skinny looking. And I'm like, and my coworker nudged me again. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm like, that voice. It's, he, Avery Brooks has a very distinctive baritone voice. Almost like a James or Earl Jones esque voice. You can't miss it. But I had problems connecting the face and body to the voice, mainly because I remember Hawk, again, the six foot five. Oh, and there goes my camera again. That's okay. The six foot five black guy who is the muscle for Spencer and Captain Cisco. And I'm like, nah. This dude's like, because I was taller than he was. He's like five, seven-ish, maybe 140 pounds soaking wet in the hockey gear. Hawk was 280 pounds of all muscle. Captain Cisco was at least 220 pounds of pure captain material. And I'm like, no, who is that? He's like, and he left. And, and I looked at him funny, I'm like, and I gave him his ham and, and, and he proceeded to check out. But then he said, that's Hawk. I'm like, and I looked back at him. I'm like, no, that's not Hawk. Hawk is this huge black guy with a freaking gun that's like this big. So like, yeah, that's him. It's like, you know what? You're right. It's like, yeah. It's like, it's like, like what made you say that? It's like the voice. And once I, once, again, a very distinctive Deep bass, baritone, uh, whatever it is, voice. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. I could like meet famous people here at Wegmans. I think Avery Brooks is actually, at the time, he was actually a professor of drama at Princeton University. Again, get to school, kids. But yeah, but this guy looked like Hawk. Um, he just like, Made AJ Styles look like a little kid. It was funny. And Matt Riddle looked absolutely terrified. The big guy's like, the referee's like, okay, I'm going to have to tell you to get out of the ring. And I'm going to count to five. And, the, and, and then it was like, one, two. Uh, uh, you, have to, you have to get, get at three, um, f four. Wait, would you, would you, would you, like, please, pretty please with sugar on top, leave the ring? Please, I really don't want to kick you out. But, yeah, the ref was amazing. The ref was good. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Again, just, he just won't leave. Like, like the poor the poor ref is, like, begging him to leave so he can ring the bell. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Riddell starts off kind of quick. Very strike-heavy match. So he um, hits the triple gut wrench suplex once they... As he goes to the outside, he like even Matt Riddell like looks legitimately terrified of this guy, as well he should be, because he looks terrifying. He looks like not the boss of a video game, 
but he's like the like henchman outside the boss's door that opens the door for you and you know nothing good is going to happen when once you go through that door so yeah that's the way that works um yeah, then AJ eventually works over Matt Riddle when they get back in the ring. Uh, AJ has that, that, oh, it was a double up kick. It was perfectly placed. Uh, Matt Riddle, one of his moves, he goes for, goes for the ropes. Um, and then does like the jump over to kind of fake, fake the moonsault. And then does the, the Broton on his opponent. AJ Styles timed that Broton perfectly. And double up kick Matt Riddle right as he did that that Broton. That was G AJ, AJ Styles. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. But yeah, that was great. Um, again, Matt Riddle goes to the outside and try and gather himself, and the big black guy just walks by. Makes just all he has to do is make a fist. Matt Riddle jumps right back in the ring. That was. Genius work. AJ Styles and hits that like GTS neck breaker there he does. Uh, Matt Riddle hit a fisherman suplex with a leg hook. Great stuff. Um, when Riddle goes to the floor, he gets back in quickly. Gets jumped by AJ. AJ hits the Styles clash. This was a really good match. Um, even though Matt Riddle lost, he lost mainly because of the intimidation factor of AJ's bodyguard. Along with that, AJ Styles move sets super good. AJ Styles is so good in the ring. This was actually a really fun surf and turf match. I'm still getting one more match before I have to break up the time here. Um, then we had a long, long preview and recap of uh, Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. Drew then the oh, Drew. Drew McIntyre. He gives such a good promo. He's he learned so much in his time in NXT, at WCPW, Defiance, um, Progress. Drew has his amazing from his days from when he was part of the three man band in WWE. Oh, what ten or so years ago. The way he is now, I mean, you can tell he, he's really matured. He's gotten the business. He knows his work. And a lot of people do say, like, as you get older, your promos get better. You just feel more comfortable in your own skin. I know there was a thing Becky Lynch did saying that how uncomfortable she felt in her little, like, skimpy outfits. Even though Becky Lynch looks amazing and probably still looks amazing. And after her baby, which, again, congratulations, Becky Lynch. Um, and I hope you're having a fun baby shower because in December, I think her baby's due. Then after she has her baby, she's still going to probably look amazing. But she said she never felt comfortable in, in, in that, um, like a skimpy two piece thing. So then she went to like the one piece, although oddly enough, she had more issues with one piece outfits than she did a two piece outfit. Go figure that out. But yeah. Um, they say like the first thing as you get older, like he, like this was evident with Goldberg, um, a whole bunch of other, whole slew of other wrestlers, Scott Steiner, as he became like big pop, really like found his big pop up pump, especially in, in, uh, a TNA. Again, their promos got so much better. It's, it's that old thing of, um, when you're young, you rely on, on muscle and, and, and pure physicalness when you get. When you get older, it's a little bit more cerebral. It's a little bit more. It's more of a mental head game, and that's true in a lot of things. Um, you know, my one job, like like the one the one dippy girls there, and she's just there like just waiting to do so. so it's like it's like no, you have to wait for me. It's like no, we gonna get this, we get this going. Like even though, you, and you have to do things in a certain way, but if you're just gonna sit sit there and just wait for people to leave. But there's only like two customers in the store. You can sweep up the store. I mean, you just can't sweep around them. It's it's simple like that. And that way, you're kind of moving. You just don't want to sit there against against the freaking wall and complain. Why are these people here? No, you can be busy. Or as me, I'm like, I'm, I'll get this stuff done. 
It's like if, if I had to sweep that floor, it's like that floor would have been done like ten minutes ago, actually. But yeah, again, Drew's so good, so so amazing on on a promo. Um, then we have, and actually, I'm gonna take a look. See if this kind of reset the camera a little bit. Yeah, if I make too many quick movements, the camera doesn't follow it perfectly. Again, this is a free video program I'm using. My video maker program, I think, cost me like 20 bucks. So, yeah. This is definitely just like the Wall of Wrestling shows. This is definitely the Hobo Studio, folks. But then our next match, we have Lana versus Asuka. And... At this point, we all know Lana's going to lose. In fact, this was a little bit more of a competitive match. Eh, it was actually, you know what? I take that back. This was probably about the right level of competition that Asuka, that Lana should actually give Asuka. Um, Asuka, again, you can tell she's carrying the match. Lana tries a bunch of roll-ups. She does some strikes with Asuka. Really dumb, bad idea. Um, eventually, the end saw... Lana get get uh, she tried to roll up Oscar countered that and roll up into like an Oscar lock, and yeah that was it. Um, we knew this was gonna happen. Lana she has a few moves. Still, I'll tell you what. Oh my, we saw a lot of Lana because she did that standing split, and if that camera was in another direction, we would see all Lana. Yeah. Like, with Rosemary and, like, metal rings down there. I don't think Lana has that, though. I don't, I don't think Rusev would appreciate that. Or Miro would appreciate that. Who knows, though? <laughs> so then, uh, Lana gets pinned. Yeah. Lana, congratulations. You won that battle royal just to get wrecked by Asuka. That's all that was going to be. Actually, this probably lead up to like a pre-show match. It'll probably be Asuka versus Shayna Baszler. Or Asuka versus... Or Lana will say, well, I'm going to finish fair shot because I have those on my mind. So we'll see Lana go through another table. But before that, um, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler come to the ring and I might be getting old. Maybe my vision's really going. Shayna Baszler is looking a little cuter now, though. She was pretty cute when I met her in person with my nephews. She's also my age, too. Hey, Shayna. I'm single. <laughs> Get that in whenever I can. Let the world know. Um, yeah, but Nia Jax and, and, and Shayna Baszler show up. Oh, the match itself. Yeah, it was a ham sandwich. Kind of what you'd expect from that. Um, then Asuka and Shannon Baser were going at it inside the ring. That was pretty good. Nia Jax put, put Lana through a table again. That just seems to be a running gag nowadays. Then, yep, uh, uh, Nia Jax and Shannon stay in the ring. They cut a good promo. They're actually pretty good together. And this leads to an impromptu... Four-team women's match. A fatal four-way tag team match for the women. It was Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Taking on... The, 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 this is a, just like the super odd couple. Peyton Royce, Lacey Evans, and then the Riot Squad come on. And this time, the Riot Squad, they're getting on the same page. Because Liv Morgan, for the most part, came out in the same color scheme like Ruby Riot did, so that's good to see. Bravo. They're getting on the same page. Um, Dana Brooke tries to win by a quick roll-up, then just brawl ensues. Every woman in the ring, yeah, you know what's going to happen next. Uh, Rose and Brooke, they double, team, they double baseball slide. Shayna and Nia Jax, when they go outside of the ring, then it just starts, uh, various other tag teams start to launch themselves. Lacey Evans had, I don't know how, like, she must not have been practicing it. But she had a lousy looking, like, she had, like, worst moonsault ever. It looks like she almost didn't rotate enough. And I know that feeling because you're like, ugh, you have to really 
the way you do a moonsault is that you kind of lower your head and push off with your legs. It's, it's a kind of a weird angle, but it's just like doing a standing backflip. Um, I, I might be able to do that if I lose like a couple, like well, a lot more weight, like lose 80 pounds. I could do that again. Like I did it once. Like I barely landed a backflip. It's kind of tricky, but it's just figuring out how high you get and when you start your rotation. Like if you don't do it, if you don't start your rotation quick enough, you just kind of flop there on your back. And that's almost what Lacey Evan did. And that looked really bad. And from the ring, I mean, that's actually a pretty decent height. So she should be able to do that fairly simply. I mean, I did one off the top rope. And if I could do a moonsault off the top rope, anyone can do a moonsault off a top rope. So, yeah, that just looked terrible, though. I, I thought she was, like, going to fall on her head there for a second. And that would not be good. But I think one wrestler, a luchador in Mexico, actually, after being hit by a double stomp, actually kind of had to get carted out. A artery kind of, I forget if it ruptured in his chest. It wasn't a heart attack. But, like, something happened with an artery in his, like, chest cavity, which just sounds bad. And, again, it is Mexico. You never know what else was going through his arteries at the time. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. Pot. <laughs> um, yeah. So, again, it just always makes you nervous whenever you see someone do, like, a bad moonsault. It is, when you see someone with a beautiful moonsault like Lacey Evans actually does have, it looks like a thing of beauty. When you see someone like do it terribly, you're just like, ew. It just doesn't look right. Um, so then after that, yeah, the worst moonsault by Lacey Evans, probably in every match I've seen. I don't know how that goes, but then Liv and Ruby Riot, they do the splash on the top ropes. Um, Nia Jax go to break, come back, Nia Jax, double suplex, both. Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. <laughs> it was funny because I'm like, this is four non-blonde. What it should be, it should be, actually it kind of was. It was four non-blondes taking on four blondes. Because if you think about it, it was the brunette, dark hair, and multicolored green hair. Because that would be Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Um... Wait, what was it? Five blondes. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Nia Rose, Shayna Baszler. Peyton Royce really doesn't have that dark. That She's blonde, but it's like that mousy brown. It's like really light brown, I think. And, of course, Ruby Wright has like black and green hair. So that's the four non-blondes. Four blondes, then. <laughs> Liv Morgan. Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, and Lacey Evans. So yeah, so four blonde. So what it should have been it should have been four blondes taking on four non-blondes. Oh well. Music reference there also. Then yep, just uh, late. Uh, yeah, Man Mandy Rose hit a pump knee. Dana Brooke did her kind of backflip thing. Then it just became your typical spot fest. Liv Morgan hit the turtle stomp. That was the uh, double knees, which looked really good. Uh, and a kick to Lacey Evans. Um, Baszler eventually puts on the rear naked choke on Lacey Evans on the outside. Nia Jax. Then Samoa drops. I think poor Peyton Royce. And yeah, th that was the end of that. Um, the champions win. So we'll see what happens for Hell in a Cell. I think they only have three announced matches so far. You know, I'll worry more about that Wednesday. Yeah, it was a good match. Cheeseburger match. I have to change CDs tonight, too. Then we had Elias band tribute. That was, a, this was actually, I'll tell you what. Elias knows what he's doing, singing and playing the guitar. Bravo, Elias. Bravo. Except for he got jumped behind with Jeff Hardy. 
So yeah, that's not good. So they're going to re uh, revisit that. Then the Miz and Morrison are in the back. back. Then the New Day come out. And they're going to take on Shane. Seamus ruins their, their party a little bit. This kind of classic stuff. Very I, I thought about the rope running by these wrestlers is amazing. So that was the one thing. You have to have a certain timing when you hit the ropes. You do get it after a while, but I think the, the repetition... And again, as you get older, you just it, like things become second nature to you. Like you could tell, like uh, someone was running videos of Mongo, of Steve Mongo McMichaels, run the ropes, <laughs> and it looked so comical. Who was it? And Mongo McMichaels, he was such a bad wrestler, but he he physically tried so hard, and his selling was great. Um, it was him versus Alex Wright. Alex Wright, I think, hit a, a a jawbuster to get out of a sleeper hole. He already stood there for like a second and then fell flat back. Oh, that looks so good. The way he ate some of those European uppercuts. <laughs> you could tell that like when Lex Luger shot him against the ropes, he fell through the ropes and Lex Luger's like, huh? Uh, Dean Malenko just looked pissed off and annoyed. It was so... It, uh, Steve Mongo McMichaels is, is an absolute wrestling treasure to watch screw up rope running. <laughs> he tried to DDT Sting. And Sting's like, the hell are you doing? Oh, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett had to pin himself. Wow, that was just funny to see. Again, when you see the good rope running, the, the, the crisp action. Jim Cornette does have something. Um, when I was taught how to run the ropes, I think at the time, because we weren't really professionals, we were taught, you want to kind of hit the ropes on your side, kind of go down, a, you want to bend down a little bit so your hip hits the second rope. Heaven forbid the top rope breaks. That way you can kind of catch yourself and not f do a cartwheel onto your head to the outside. And again, you can hang on a little bit to the top rope, and then you bounce back, you hit it sideways, and you pivot and push. It's hard to show when I'm hooked up like this, but yeah. Um, they did again. It's one of those things. If you do it enough, like he made us, he made us to go like back and forth and take a bump, and then like as long as and then like for the most part, with minus a few, I think only one person that like, couldn't figure out how to take a bump or like hit the ropes right. Then he's like, ah, just do it again. Yeah. And I think I did it my first try. It's like, oh, I think he was impressed with my back bump. I also could run the ropes I, and then moonsault, but then everything else about my wrestling skills kind of sucked back then. But then it got a little bit better. I think the thing was, I was nervous always about throwing punches to like a face. I just didn't want to potato anyone because that's bad. I didn't want to punch them. Like, like leg, kits, leg kicks and body shots. You can get away with, like, like yeah. You can like slip up, like for a body punch. You can really pull a body punch back quickly, even if you think you hit it too hard. Um, leg kicks, yeah, they're kind of annoying as long as you don't really like. If you hit them like more in the upper thigh versus like just a two inches right above the knee, um, still makes a good good sound. Knees are knees are okay. It's like, yeah, hey, you really hit me with a knee. Because you use your thigh. It still kind of hurts, but you're not going to really, like, hurt anyone. But, yeah, I was always nervous about that that close fist. Like, like if I miss, like, you, you literally don't want to, like, one knock a tooth out, two break someone's jaw, or, or three just really piss them off. Because then it tunes into to a shoot, and a shoot among friends just sucks. So, yeah, so the fact that they can do it as well as they can is kind of amazing. Uh, Seamus then, again, he does that. He just needs that derby hat. He needs to look like the, the Belfast brawler. That's all. Again, still still very brawlerish. Uh, he caught Kofi, his clothesline, then the 10 beats of, of, of Belfast or Belfry. Well, I don't know, whatever that is. Uh, Kofi Kingston does the flying stomp, which actually looked really amazing. Uh, hit the boom drop. New day. Boom. Seamus kind of counters with the uh, Texas Cloverleaf. Then after Kofi kind of pulls himself out of that, 
Sheamus puts him. Sheamus delivers the Alabama slam. Xavier Woods was screaming by by the ring cycle. I'm like, who the hell's that talking so much? Oh, that's Xavier Woods. That's good. It's always good to have a tag team partner that can talk, especially in these empty arena settings. Even though you 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 do have piped in noise, which yeah, um, it would be better if like people in audio on video had like some like audio cue. That would be a little bit more realistic. Can you just put a microphone in front of each TV? Listen, you got TVs. I'm sure you can get a freaking El Cheapo mic like this to put in front of it. But, um, again, the, the top rope side Russian leg sweep was great. The creativity. Then he uh, finally hit the, the trouble in paradise. Uh, pin Sheamus. This was also really good. This was a good surf and turf match. Yeah, we had a retribution promo. Ali says, yeah, I was a SmackDown hacker. I wanted to show the whole world why people weren't getting attention like they should. Then, let's see here. That was amazing person. This was great. This was amazing. Um, uh, in the backstage, Titus O'Neil gets jumped by the Hurt Business. Again, if you're not going to be with the Hurt Business, you're going to be against the Hurt Business. That was Miz and Morrison versus T Tucker Knight. And El Gran Gordo. <laughs> oh, we're going crazy. So El Gran Gordo is probably the son of Grand Metal League and the illegitimate cousin of El Generico. That was great, though. I'll tell you what, they have to have somewhere in wardrobe, they have to have, like, lying around, they have the generic... Mexican luchador purple mask because every wrestler, um, La Mascarita was wore, wore purple. Remember, that was Becky Lynch and also Mickey James. Um, of course, El Gran Gordo has the purple mask. Generally, if they have to hide someone's identity, they, they tend to use that purple mask. I think Cedric Alexander even wore a purple. Wait, he did. He did it when he took the place of the janitor. Indeed. Uh, so this was pretty. This was a, actually a fairly fun match. Um, he, you know, I mean, you know who who El Gran Gordo was. That was just funny. Um, um, Morrison's so good. He's so being wasted though. Oh, please go back to Impact Wrestling. Go to New Japan. Go. Go to AAA. Please, John Morrison, please. I know he's getting paid. He has probably, an, with the WWE running out of Orlando, probably has like the, the, the most basic of all schedules. But, yeah. Like, he, was some, he was something with Johnny Impact. Then um, And before that, Johnny, Johnny Mundo was his best character, by the way. Um, that yeah, John Morrison was good, especially when he teamed up um, with Eminem. But I mean, Johnny Mundo was an amazing pers persona, and Lucha Underground, Johnny Impact, yeah, the Impact name was was kind of was kind of cheesy, but still, they allowed him to do his amazing stuff, though. Uh, let's see, here. yep. So he gets in the heel choking by Miz when the referee is distracted. The heel chokes Tucker Knight. And the ropes, um, again, the standing moonsaults. Again, that's, that's, that's really tough to do, actually. Because you can't over-rotate because then you'll, like, stomp on someone. And there's a thought process of your face getting near the ground after, like, flipping backwards. Your old equilibrium. It's kind of, it just feels sketchy a little bit. It's hard to put in words other than that, really. Um, Tucker eventually gets the tag. Grand Gordo, uh, get flapjacks. John Morrison, he gets so much height. <laughs> he even did, and I have to clap him for this. He did like a second rope Mexican arm drag. Yes, El Generico. Ole, 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 ole. Lucha, lucha, lucha. Uh, R-Truth then just randomly runs in the ring being chased by Drew Gulak and Tozawa. Random 
stuff. Then again, he corners, I think Miz ate it this time, at the Caterpillar and the Gordo Bomb. I'll call it that. The Vader Bomb. Tucker Knight and El Gran Gordo win. I, I can't say anything bad. Um, this It was a cheeseburger match. It made me smile. It made me laugh. And there goes my camera again. It doesn't want me to adjust myself. But yeah, then uh, Lucha House Party was out there. And they kind of like stared at El Gran Gordo. That was that was a really cool thing. Maybe El Gran Gordo is going to replace Kalisto. Who knows? It was more generic Mexican masks. That's awesome. So again, it's the most generic looking Mexican luchador mask ever. Then we have the so that was a cheeseburger mash. That was actually again, it just made you laugh. Uh, the Firefly Funhouse Rabbit again say we can all come. We can all get get together again. It's like, yay. And, and then he gets eaten again. Like, how, how many times has Ramblin' Rabbit died? He's been eaten, like, like a couple times by, by Mercy the Buzzard. And then Creepy Alexa Bliss shows up. We'll see what happens. I just saw that um, American Horror Show. That's some messed up stuff. There's a lot of freaky freak going on in that show and twerking skeletons yes then um the next match was braun Strowman taking on keith lee oh baskin is glory and said he's like has that very generic wrestling song people don't like and we see woo rick flair on tv and that's and Mark Henry was there, and I'm kind of disappointed in the WWE, really for the main fact that instead of having fans there who may or may not pay to be part of Thunderdome, you're ta you're you're taking one or two fans and you're saying, you know what? Instead of you, fan, we don't care about you. We want to put one of our wrestlers like Ric Flair on TV. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it. The whole Thunderdome thing is unique. It's a way to at least see people in a crowd so it doesn't feel empty. But when you start superimposing your people in with the crowd, I don't know. Uh, it's not something I get. Then, so it was, yeah, Braun Strowman and Keith Lee. Braun, he just, they tie up. He backs up Keith Lee in the corner of the headbutt and strikes. Uh, Lee gets pounced, or he does, or Strowman does, like, the ooh, ooh, Strowman Express on the ring. Uh, Lee goes after the bad ribs, after you figure that out. Um, he a big splash on Braun Strowman, so he's great. Uh, Braun gets pounced, that was great. And as Keith Lee looks like he's going to set up Braun Strowman for the spirit bomb, Braun was sneaky, and I like this because it's not obvious, but he lifted his head right up into the groin of Keith Lee. Keith Lee sold that ball shot great. Um, and then it was just an off the ropes to Big Boot. Braun Strowman gets a one, two, three. Keith Lee's like, you're going to win like that? A straight kick to the nuts. Like, yeah, straight kick. That had to hurt. I said, you, you ain't going to do me like that. So these two will probably fight Hell in a Cell too. And this match, yeah. It just seemed to be missing something. It was a ham sandwich match. And then the final segment, we have Randy Orton. He locks himself in the Hell in a Cell as the Hell in a Cell comes down. There we go. That's a little bit better. I think this chair is just getting worn. But, yeah. Uh, he locks himself in the Hell in a Cell. He says, come on, Drew. Come on into my world. Drew's like, no, uh, you come out here. They argue, say, yeah, come on. Um, Drew McIntyre eventually produces a pair of bolt cutters. They go in the ring. Uh, I don't think much happened. They just kind of stare down at each other and then just says, nope, that's it. 
a WooTube hit a Chuggo video, and that was it. So again, they're teasing the Hell in a Cell. That should actually, depending on what they do and how they do it, again, it always comes down to what they do and how they do it, could be really good or really bad. It's kind of the way WWE pay-per-views have been going. It's either, and I, I can't appreciate it, they either give you the A or they give you the F. There's very, they have the A, the F pay-per-view. There's very little meh. It was a good pay-per-view. It's either really good or really bad. The A or the F effort, very little in the middle. So again, I already gave you guys my schedule. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and Sean Ross Sapp. Ch check out Hobo Tom and Hobo and his girlfriend. And there's no twerking videos, but I have cooking videos, uh, video game videos, wrestling videos. And every so often, just like random videos, like of me underneath a racetrack, um, concerts, random stuff like fishing, 10 things to do during, like the 10 things to do during COVID, 10 things to do with the stay at home order, a whole bunch of unique content, just not twerking videos. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Email too. Um, I'll check my emails one day. Bye.